we moved into a society where you're just trying to get everything done quickly. And so the quickest way to do that is to go into a big box store and buy your meat. The fact that each neighborhood doesn't have their own butcher shop, each neighborhood loses that culture. The idea of a, an old school local butcher is making that meal an event. If you want to buy cheap food, go to Walmart. If you want to buy quality food, you have to support the small butcher shop. Yeah, we're high school sweethearts, so we've known each other since the sixth grade. So I've known him for longer than I haven't. <laughs> Chris went to culinary school and I went to IU. And when we moved to Chicago, there was a butcher shop on every corner. When we decided to move home, we wanted to open our own restaurant was the first idea. I had three business plans before I opened Use the Market. And so I finally came up with uh, the butcher shop and you know, really wanted to focus on the charcuterie. Today, more than ever, people really want to know where their food is coming from. So they want to know that the products that they're eating, that they're giving their families, are quality and that they're the best that they can feed their family. What I liked about Indianapolis was that there was room to like make a bigger impact. You need to, you know, have the relationships with all these farms. It's not that it can't be done in Chicago, it's just more difficult than it is in Indianapolis. I've been here 10 years, and from the farm at home, I had the experience of how the clean food uh, farm to table movement had started. Uh, I took this job and uh, felt that I could help educate folks of where their food comes from. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. We've got a nice set of Osval hogs here. How does the flavor different from that of a normal hog? Modern hogs are bred to grow a lot faster and be a lot leaner. Uh, the flavor is in the, the fat, as you well know, and so the uh, ability to take up new flavors in the fat is one thing this breed still has going for it. And that's really one of the best parts of my job yeah. is to pass the breed on to the next generation. Once you've tasted the flavor of this meat, you know, the first batch of bratwurst I had made out of these hogs, I ate 12 of those things in one setting. Sure, that seems unusual to eat a breed to save it, but that's what makes other people want to raise this breed. So the breed would go extinct if I can't get enough money to make that, that hog viable. I don't think either one of us could have ever imagined that the market and the smoking goose would have turned out the way they did. People thought we were crazy in 2007. I, I thought we were a little crazy too, but obviously the city's you know, supported that. We have shown that it can be done. And we don't have any intention of opening 20 of these in different neighborhoods. So it'll take other people. Wildwood markets come in, they've been great for Fountain Square. Our two goes come in and Pogues Run on East 10th Street. The more that we have of these, uh, the more that people expect them and then that they'll come back around and support them. These small businesses will just continue to grow in each of the little neighborhoods. The community has just embraced us and really made sure that we're successful. It's just a really important part that the, the food movement is catching hold and really getting more and more momentum. And Indianapolis is ripe for it. And uh, thanks to folks like Chris and Smoking Goose, I see a real strong future for it.